feel it's okay to publicly display affection amongst strangers or family? If so, how much? Is it just like hand holding, pat on the back, kissing? Pat on the back. <laughs> hey, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to The Cold Life. This is part two of a Valentine's Day conversation about intimacy. Yes. Questions that were asked about our intimacy, uh, both sexual, non-sexual. So it's been really, really fun answering these questions, but let's get into the rest of them. We didn't want to stop. We didn't want to stop. So real quick, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you are new, check out the part one because it was very interesting and we just could not stop. So we're going to keep going. Hit us up on Instagram at underscore the cold life underscore. All right, let's go. What is your favorite of each other's bodies? What is your favorite body Which part? Favorite part? Um, <laughs> I would say I love Brian's eyes. Outside of sexual body parts, I would say I love his eyes. His eyes have a little bit of hazel in them. And so when the light shines on it, it's just like, oh, I was I, I legitimately this is deep. I always just looked at my eyes as just brown eyes. I thought they were super boring. I thought they were plain. It was not until I met Lexi that because of how she responded to my eyes, I started looking in the mirror and actually seeing my eyes. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, like it, they're not just boring brown. Not that brown's not boring, but, <laughs> but it was it was like she revealed a part of me that I didn't even notice in myself. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Outside of non-sexual parts mm -hmm. um lexi's lips i can't even talk about them here <laughs> i'm it's just, done it's uh it's a it's a whole thing yeah i love love your lips do you feel it's okay to publicly display affection amongst strangers or family if so how much is it just like hand holding pat on the back kissing pat on the back <laughs> <laughs> hey, bud. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think we have a problem displaying affection at all. No. I think there was a level where we probably displayed too much affection around our family. Like we'll just be, you know, kind of just on each other like we are now. And this is when we were dating. Um, I think even when we talk to you guys, we've always, we've never talked on a couch. And yeah, we're always like we're always, we're always sitting in chairs upright and proper. Like. Yeah, we never really talked like this is how we are. This is how we talk when we're around our family. We like to be in each other's spaces and that's how we are. So we I think we're very affectionate. We have no problem. I think we've actually taken it down a notch in front of people because there was a point I think we were just we we're just like we were all over each, all other. each other and it's and, not to be like not it wasn't to be weird it's just how we are we but like physical touch is a huge part of our love language will you continue to date one another or feel comfortable in day-to-day -day married life yeah we we go on yeah. weekly date nights um yeah we we really don't give those up for hardly anything um no. and we've been loving it like again our marriage is such a priority to us and our relationship our commitment to each other keeping yeah. things fresh being spontaneous like always room for improvement, but that is just always gonna be a focus for us. Mm -hmm. And I would say that when it comes to dating, it's not just doing date nights. We just like to make sure we talk to each other about our days and what's going on. We love to just connect. Like, it's not like we see it as mandatory. We just see mm -hmm. it as we want to hear about each other's day. We wanna talk to each other. We miss each other throughout the day. Yeah. We, I think I am very adamant on making sure that our relationship stays intact with us first. Yeah. How was your intimate life with parents and now they will be living with you? Um, I, this is a personal story. I struggled when my mom stayed with us. She is not a, an affectionate type of person. <gasps> so for all those that don't know, my parents will be living with us. Our basement's being finished right now for them. Mm -hmm. They'll be living with us for probably like six months or mm -hmm. give or take until their house is done. They're yeah. building a house right next to us. So we're so excited to have them. Um, I think maybe living with with your mom, Matthew and Nathan, it was hard because a there was, I was, I was a lot of people and very people were home. A lot of times we didn't care. It's just we had to be kind of quiet. But um, with my mom, my mom was either you know, doing stuff upstairs when we live with my mom and that really wasn't a major issue. No, I think it's, um, I think it's about establishing boundaries and setting expectations. So for us with both of our families, it was just like, 
hey guys, there's gonna be times where we need to be alone and we'll let yeah. you know when those are. And there's gonna yeah. be times where we just maybe want a part of the house to ourselves or whatever. Like with her mom, we lived in the basement. So we were, we had space to ourselves. Like yeah. we were pretty by ourselves and when we wanted to be. So yeah. I don't know, I think it's about boundaries, about setting expectations and just asking and being you know, yeah. vocal about it. And we had a conversation before of just what that looked like. And even Brian's mom was very open to you know, you guys, we'll all leave so you guys can just chill and have some yeah. alone time. They were so adamant about that. We appreciated that a lot. Have you initiated and been denied? How do you handle that? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're married. Like, this is everyday life. Not every yeah. time we want it, we get it. Yeah. So, um, I've initiated a lot of times and been denied sometimes. Um, how do I handle that? So here's the thing. There have been times where Lexi is not in the mood, just not the right timing. She's stressed about the day, like has a lot going on. It could be many things, right? Yeah. But I am someone who just believes in persistence and not in a pressuring type of way, but in a, just got a relaxer and, you know, ease our way into a moment. <laughs> and do nice things say nice things whisper in her ear a little bit you know gently <laughs> caress like all of those things will lead to the magic and so i feel mm -hmm. like with us there have been very few times that i've been truly denied uh because generally lexi is someone who is very open and, and wanting and all of that for our sex life but mm -hmm. uh the times that i have been like truly just denied i think like it doesn't affect me because I'm like, I get it. Like mo yeah. most of the times we have, we end up having sex. So yeah. it's just like, that eh, makes sense. I'm I good. Think like, it's, I, not, it's not like a rejection thing. It's just. Yeah. I think very few times for Brian as well. I think the times that it is like, I kind of respect it because there's very few times that Brian doesn't. And so when he really doesn't, then I'm like, oh, we must be like really needing some time to yeah. be. Like I'll have, like it's it's the times when I have like a huge project or deadline mm. or like just 10 things going on at once and I can't like pull my mind away and yeah. I'm like, it's not the time. Yeah, and that's okay. Like I think, you know, I hate saying we need to normalize, but I feel like there is some normalizing of realizing that, you know, men and women sometimes need some time to not, you know, it's okay if we're not in the same mood at the same time. Like, let's be honest, <laughs> Yeah. but yeah. How do you handle availability for sexual intimacy, especially with work and a child? I would say doing, I, I'm very proud of myself for putting A's on a schedule and mm -hmm. that helps us a lot. Once she started to get on a schedule when it comes to nighttime and stuff like that, of course, before then we just kind of made it work. But when it comes to her now having a schedule, it makes it very easy to just have open doors for many things. Mm -hmm. I would say that. Yep. Last question. Mm -hmm. We've got some really good questions. Yeah, I hope this was informational. Um, we want you guys to just kind of talk with us here and let us know what you think of all of our questions, all of our answers to your questions, so. How do you keep God in the center of your intimacy, sexual and non-sexual? I feel when it comes to intimacy, non-sexual, I think we make sure that we do the spiritual intimacy too. I think that's been a huge part of intimacy is making sure that we're spiritually connected and we are building each other in different ways and avenues of life in a godly manner to make sure that we're connecting with each other. Yeah, I mean, Lexi, we've given each other full reign to comment on each other's spiritual lives, our spiritual mm -hmm. conditions, our spiritual, you know, habits, like all of those things, we are very intimately involved in those things mm -hmm. in each other's lives. So. Yeah. Again, I think that builds a connection because she has the right to check me when I'm off. She has yeah. the right to ask me how I'm doing and that builds intimacy with us knowing that we want our, our spiritual lives to be the best they can be in our closeness with God. But yeah. um, sexually, I would say it, it's more so taking the principles of, of the Bible and applying it in a sexual manner. And I say that not to sound weird, but more so the idea that in marriage, it's about giving, not receiving. Yeah. And so we apply that to our sexual life where if I am focused on making her have the greatest experience sexually and she's doing the same to me, 
then both of our needs are fulfilled yeah. and we get what we want, but we're not focused on getting what we want. Yeah. So it, it's taking the selfish nature, the selfish aspect of sex out of the picture and focused on pleasing, sacrificing, giving. And if both parties are doing that, then you're in for a wild ride. I had a conversation with this couple and there was a conversation where I was asking like, how do you know that you're giving your woman the best experience? And they're like, well, I've been with other women. I've been with other women. Like I know what they like and don't like. I'm like, but every woman is different mm -hmm. and every woman has a different experience. So how do you know that this woman right here is experiencing and loving what you're doing? And there's two parts to that. I think there's one where the guy has to want to give what this woman wants, like yeah. not exactly not what, what they think they're good at. Yeah, not what they think they're good at. You have to know what this one wants and study this woman. This woman is not like all women. And then on the other hand, women have to speak up and say what what works and what doesn't work. That's and real. that is huge. That's real. Me and Brian have a very, con you know, we have conversations. We talk about things, whether we try new things or whatever. We have conversation. As much as I talk about how Brian communicates with me, I want to make sure and I do communicate with him. And I ask, what does he like? What does he will? That is what I feel giving and receiving should look like. And from a godly perspective, I always want this experience to be emotionally connecting. I don't want that. I don't want this experience to come in a negative sense. Like, oh, we're just having sex just to have sex because God told us to have sex. Like, no, this is a beautiful moment for us to connect each yeah. time. We want to feel that connection. We want to be in this moment. Um, and if you're not, that's a, that's a conversation because I don't think God intended it to be like that. God wants it to be a connection. God wants us to be unite like this. So yeah, Lexi and I, um, we committed a long time ago to not have sex. If one of us is not emotionally connected, Yeah. if we're upset or hurt, it's not the right time to have sex. Yeah. We have to work through that thing first, because what we don't want is if we do that on a consistent basis, we're going to associate a negative emotion yeah. to the act of sexual intimacy. And that linking of those two things can be very dangerous. Yeah. I feel like that's how a lot of people, both men and women, are turned off by having sex with their spouse because yeah. they've done it too many times where it wasn't an emotional and a spiritual experience. Yeah. So we're very careful about that. And it's not like if we're upset, we just don't have sex for three weeks. Like, no, we, we just work through our we stuff. We try to work through it. We work through our stuff. And, yeah. then, and then we come together. Yep. Wow. <laughs> we need to wrap this up. Um, well, we love you guys. <laughs> um, we, this was very connecting for us. I think this was nice this to just share. I know, I really liked it. We, we want to make sure that we are open and honest with you guys. Yeah. You know, just let us know what you think of this. And, you know, if you have any stories or just ideas or books that you guys are reading, we let this be a conversational piece where we can talk with each other, communicate. Well, we love you guys. Let us know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Bye, guys. See ya.